But I love breaking the canoes. I love it all. Come on, get them, Lara. Get them. Rawr. Look at all the meat she keeps in her freezer. Like, you know, she's all about the protein thingy. And you get this cool moment, movie moment. I love that. Kind of disturbing, like when you know the layout of Lara Croft's garden. We made it! And I just love these little details they put in. Like Heather Gibson, you genius. This hunky Italian beefcake coming right at us. The Fiamma Nera always knew to hire the muscles. Ah, beautiful horizon, beautiful distance, beautiful scenery. We've all climbed up to this window and had a look out. Like that was like one of the joys of playing Tomb Raider. It's just the beautiful vistas you could see. It's really captured my imagination growing up. And Judah Gibbons, you did a great job, hon. Hi everyone, I'm Lee Loy. Welcome back to Lee's Play. And today we are finally playing Tomb Raider 2, which is my favorite game in the franchise and therefore my favorite game of all. And yeah, I just love Tomb Raider 2 so much and I'm so excited to play it finally on this channel, as I was saying for the past couple of uh, years, basically. Tomb Raider 2, what can I say about you? Like, it's just the best Tomb Raider game by far. Like, if you want me to rank my, th my top three Tomb Raider games, it'd be Tomb Raider 2, it'd be Rise of the Tomb Raider, which I actually think are very similar, just different eras, and then Tomb Raider Anniversary. Those are my top three. Uh, for those who haven't played Tomb Raider 2, I'm not going to speak over this opening cutscene, but this sets up the story for Tomb Raider 2, which is all about the dagger of Siam. And I haven't played this in about, I'd say, six or seven years. I think last time I played was 2015 or 2016. So I'm super excited to jump back into this game and, you know, explore Venice and the Wreck of the Maria Doria, Tibet, I love it all. I remember like being a kid and this cutscene used to freak me out so much. Um, everything about this game is just a masterpiece. Like they just, everyone did their job and did it well on Tomb Raider 2. This is incredible. I think the, it's so atmospheric, so moody, even this opening cutscene, and Lara isn't even in it. I think they just set up the story so well, it's so clever. Yeah, I'm a big Tomb Raider 2 fan, obviously. Forevermore. So this is Tomb Raider 2 and we're actually going to play the PC version. There's a really great um, community, I guess, patcher who patched Tomb Raider 2. So it actually behaves a lot now like the PlayStation version. It has like a cool inventory screen. It's in 4K widescreen and it's all set up good to go. So it should be a really pleasant let's play for everyone to watch and for me to enjoy. This is the first time I'm enjoying Tomb Raider 2 with like the 4K upscaling and you know the HD cutscenes and everything else. There's even demo mode, it, it really behaves like the PlayStation version even though this is the Steam version and I am playing on an Xbox controller. So I think, should we go and give Lara's home a little jaunt? We can kind of, I can talk about why I love Tomb Raider 2 so much before we jump into the main adventure. Um, I think let's go into Lara's home. Welcome back. After that grueling business last year, and I decided Winston. to build this assault course to hone my skills and learn some new ones. So objectively, Tomb Raider 2 is just the best Tomb Raider game out there, which is so unobjective, like that's the most op-ed opinion one can have. But like, it's just so good. And like me and this assault course, 
like, yeah, Tomb Raider 2 is so good. Even though I think Tomb Raider 3 has the best craft manner, it's the one where it's the most expansive. You have, you know, the guns, the quad bike. Um, Tomb Raider 2, though, overall, it's just a better game. I think they just nailed the pacing of it. I think Tomb Raider 3 is a little difficult. If I was to go back and play Tomb Raider 3 now, I probably would still have to consult a walkthrough, even for something like Lud's Gate, which is an absolute nightmare. Um, and also one of the Antarctica levels where it's kind of mazy. I probably would just cheat and read a walkthrough for that. It's one of those things you don't even bother to remember because it's so obscure. Um, but Tomb Raider 2, I think oh, the difficulty is just about right. Which is funny because I just read um, an article from Eurogamer that talked about Tomb Raider 2 being insanely difficult when you got landed in 40 fathoms, which is this underwater level we're going to see later on. Um, but I actually, even growing up, I thought that was pretty easy because we were always able to find the ship and get in and then, you know, quickly find land and do a level skip until, the, until an another level came along. But I just love Tomb Raider 2. Almost. Perhaps another try and I might beat it. Feel free to explore the rest of the house and gardens. What? That was a great time. One minute twenty. I think another reason why I love this game so much is obviously I'm half Chinese, half Irish. And Tomb Raider 2 was probably my first exposure to something that was about like East Asian history. Like Indiana Jones very much took place in like, you know, you know, the Middle East and you know different types of adventures like that. And you know, the mummy was all about Egypt. This was like the first game where I was really able to connect with kind of mythology, I suppose, from my ethnic background. Which is probably an interesting thing to do in a game called Tomb Raider, which stars a white British woman. But when you're growing up and you're a kid, you don't you don't think about stuff like that. You know, you know, all I remember all I you know, all I ever heard about from my father was that, you know, he, you know, he was from Chinese and you know the Great Wall of China and you know my you know, when you're young and it's not even, you know, you know, educated in school, you know, my first exposure is running around the Great Wall of China with Lara Croft and fighting tigers. So, like, it's always just been, you know, really positive and so inspiring on me. So much so that I did go to China four years ago in 2018 and I purposely went to Zion, you know, because, you know, that's where Lara found, you know, the dagger of Zion and it was just it was super cool and it's something that kind of really inspired me to travel. Let's find the butler. Where do we think he is? Um, this is Lara's kitchen. It's so like obviously now in 2022 you're like what is this but when you oh, especially on a PlayStation 1 like the graphics are so good and you know even Lara's outfit's kind of on point. I think it's perfect like she's wearing trousers and you know a sports bra like yeah, of course, Lara Croft would, you know, have that. And of course, look at all the meat she keeps in her freezer. Like, you know, she's all about the protein to build all those strong muscles. I love how from Tomato 1 to Tomato 2, she's changed this into a ballroom. It's back to being a ballroom. And you can punch some music. I'll punch some music while you wait for Winston. Oh, we can probably still go for a swim. Like, I love how eclectic her mansion is. Like, you know, like, what does she do? Have people over for a dinner party, then they all go, like, you know, into the pool for a pool party? I think that's, like, what my Croft Manor is so iconic, is that, you know, the layout of her mansion is so insane. I don't like when they try to rationalize it. It's like, you should probably keep the ballroom by the swimming pool room. Let's open the back door and see if we can find Winston. Winston, where are you? There he is. Was he just hanging outside this entire time? And the music, like bombing through Venice on the speedboat, blowing your way through the building and hitting the canoes while the music was playing. Like it's such a good moment. It's like a real James Bond movie moment. I'd also say the level designers like Heather Gibson really nailed their level design by this point. They were able to make some incredible locations and environments. Come on. Okay, Winston, in you go. I don't know if we're going to do an all secrets run of Tomb Raider 2 because I kind of just want to have fun and just kind of sit back and just enjoy the, uh, the journey. And I think in the later on levels I probably won't remember all the secret locations but I mean, you know, we'll take it easy. We'll have a fun playthrough and if we find some secrets and we can get some extra weapons that's always fun. So let's go and explore Lara's um, trophy room. Now we're going to see if after all these years I can still do this the first attempt. I've faith in myself. So this is her infamous hedge maze and if I remember correctly this is gonna come back to me. This will come back to me. There is a method to uh, getting out of her maze on time. Now I think I've gone the right way. <laughs> Am I on the right way? 
Ooh, that's like the side of her house, which means this is the right way. Cause this should be, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Isn't that like kind of disturbing? Like when you know the layout of Lara Croft's garden, like off by heart. Oh, let's take some flares. For some odd reason, tr the trigger buttons aren't working on my Xbox controller for mapping Tomb Raider 2. So I'd have to like push the analog stick in to take a flare out. That's the way I've mapped the controls on this occasion. Let's go. Will we do it the first time? I think we will. Let's do this. Now I'm going to go out a different way than I came in. Um, because I know that an easy way to do Tomb Raider is if you just follow the walls. If that's the back wall of like the gate of her house and there's the side of her house, all you have to kind of do is just follow it around like so there we go now we need to follow a path that brings us into the right here and you're wanting to keep white rays like this yeah there we go that's like when you know you're an absolute tomb raider nerd you know the geography of lara's maze um as i said i'm a big fan of tomb raider too now let's see if we get there in time i wasn't jumping enough we made it! And we have plenty of time to spare. We can watch. How long do you think we have? One Mississippi, two. Oh, we have plenty of time. Like, many seconds. That's <laughs> how much of a nerd. That wasn't even a struggle. We didn't even break a sweat on that one. This is Lara's trophy room. That's crack a flare. And you can kind of see all of the, uh, the her, her uh, trophies from her past adventure exploits. Um, I think there's one from Tomb Raider Gold specifically. There's the cat, the shadow of the cat, right? We got a little idol in here. Um, some more trophies. Maybe that's a Persian rug. I mean, that's that that object at the top was from um, Vilcabamba, right? It was one of the the idols. Um, I don't know what the middle one was. Ooh, that's probably custom made for Tomb Raider 2. Yeah, yeah, she, she has like a folded up Persian rug. Maybe that's like a spare one if her um, ballroom rug gets dirty. We got another shadow of the cat in there. And like, oh, a ton of gold. It's, it's all her gold. I mean, she is definitely a gold hogger. The flare effects are so cool in this game. Tomb Raider 2 is amazing. Can't hype her enough. Yeah, I mean, this is basically everything Croft Manor has to offer. Another thing you can do for some fun is glitch and get out of her house. I'm going to show you now doing the corner bug. This is very easy for those who want to try at home. You basically walk to the, walk to the edge like so. Oh, she might need a bit more. There we go. Lovely. And you turn her to the side a bit. The infamous 32-bit era. Uh games on their polygon glitching collision issues but you know they even textured the roof of our house even though no one should be up here like they could have saved memory on the playstation and not textured it but they still did it anyway i suppose just in case maybe their play testers were glitching and maybe they knew internally it was going to be a fun easter egg but this is where i dropped down i think there's probably a better way where you could take less damage but i always find that this was a pretty good way to do it and then all one has to do is hop on over here. Ah, we're basically running on the um the edge of Lara's map and Lara's home. And you can even see that was, you know, the um the inside of the maze. And then yeah, then you can kind of come here and you know a lot of people I suppose are always trying to get beyond the gate. This is how you do it. And you can have a little hop down. And as you can see, the, uh, the game designer is a core design just built enough for uh, the view if you're on the other side. You know, this is all you would kind of see and that's all they had to make. So this is like every secret of Croft Manor in Tomb Raider 2. And I think with that, let's jump on and play the main campaign, the main adventure. Let's go to China, everyone. This cutscene is so iconic. So Lara Croft, of course she has a helicopter. And she makes her heroic dramatic entrance into this little tunnel. 
This is an amazing mod for Tomb Raider 2 on the PC. It adds so many quality of life improvements. I highly recommend you get it. I'll put a link in the description. But yeah. And I just love these little details they put in. Like Heather Gibson, Hugh Genius, having the helicopter. Like it's just stuff like that, that back in the day was like what made Tomb Raider 2 a triple A game. Absolute attention to detail, going the extra mile when they didn't have to. All in terms of telling the story of Tomb Raider 2 in the game, not just through cutscenes. Love it. Now when you get out of the water, a tiger spawns, we can get them from up here. And the second one spawns when you climb taller up, up towards the Great Wall. But I don't typically go back down and uh, fight it. That tiger can live and eat its poor brother. We're going to just basically make our way up this mountain top. I also played the Tomb Raider 2 fan uh, remastering by Nico Bass, which is like he built it on Unreal and that was incredible. It was actually one of the main reasons why I bought a gaming PC three years ago because I really wanted to play it. That was insane. I'd love to cover that. I wonder when he's going to finish Craft Manor or even finish the first level. I'm pretty sure he did it to get himself a career and like a proper job at a game studio and it worked because he totally did. So as you can see we just climbed the summit of the Great Wall and we're going to make our way inside the first guard gate. Yeah again and you have to remember like you know as a Chinese person this is probably my first exposure to Chinese culture which sounds so weird to be in a game called Tomb Raider but like you know when you're four years old and it's you really have the booklet of the PlayStation 1 and it's talking about Lara's you know journey to China and then all of a sudden you're on the Great Wall this is all I ever had known until, you know, I was much older. Growing up, I was just obsessed with this game. And then we're going to make our way out here and some eagles are going to spawn. I mean, isn't it just stunning? It's so beautiful. Like, I think the art style for this game is perfect. I think, I don't think it has dated. I think, you know, it's cartoony, but I think it works. I mean, back in the day, people thought this was super realistic. And I think in the mid 2000s, 2010 era, people would be like, oh, the graphics are so bad. I think it's actually a great color palette. It's visually stunning. And it's just like a really good animated cartoon because it's so well animated, particularly her movements, the way her hair blows in the wind. You can really, it's just a really well done game. So let's get the guard key for the guard tower. And then when we get out of the water, another tiger is going to spawn. And we can hear them. Oh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. Now yeah, let's make our way back up. I feel like I know this level off by heart. And I'll probably die in the let's play when I'm recording it for an audience. But I'm again, I'm just, I'm laying back. I'm having fun. I'm, I'm playing my favorite Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 2. So this is the guardhouse key. Now I do have a phobia of spiders. And <laughs> all these times playing Tomb Raider 2 hasn't helped that, so when I hear the sound effects on their legs and the way they explode into a million pieces, ill. Like the people at Core Design knew what they were doing. And just the little details, like they put a little staircase back there so you can climb up and have a look out through the guard tower. I mean, even back then they knew like the importance of just creating really lovely vistas. Just those extra details that like when you're five or six years old, because again, this is a game that a lot of people played growing up. We've all climbed up to this window and had a look out. Like that was like one of the joys of playing Tomb Raider was just the beautiful vistas you could see. Just really captured my imagination growing up. So let's go ahead and put in this key, the rusty key. Look at the cobwebs. Ugh. And they all drop from the ceiling, these spiders. I'm like, ooh, gross. And some more spawn behind you. Some are gonna spawn. Uh -huh. So we all have to just pull this back. I think we've all, we've all stared up through the ceiling. The textures are so good. So something I didn't realize until quite later on in life is that you can just shimmy there. But I think as a kid, we've all just kind of just, you know, kind of closed our eyes, hoped for the best, and just went through the puddle, which is what I'm just going to do now because that's how I played it growing up. I mean, the smart thing to do, guys, is to shimmy. Do a shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. I mean, I might need some help doing this, but I mean, that was like kind of like the, oh my gosh, are we going to make it? I love this area because this is like when the game designers knew. They're like, you played the first one. We don't have to show you the ropes, so we're going to throw you into the thick of it. And they got this little great boulder sequence. Uh, all we're going to do is hop out here we're gonna move forward like that 
Let's see if I can pick up these magnums. Oh, I might have to redo this, folks. She gonna die. Yeah, she gonna die. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I know what I'm supposed to do. Sorry, one second. You're supposed to ever get whacked by that. And then you do a jump somersault. There you go. Sorry, it's coming back to me now. Ooh. Ooh. Not because I'm a wimp and I hate losing progress, we're gonna save again. Let's see if we can go for all the secrets. Kind of have to land her here. Ooh. It's fine, let's just go for it. There's only like two dinosaurs we have to defeat, it's fine. Well, that didn't even close in on us. Oh, do they put the reflections in on the PC version? Oh, that's so cool. The PlayStation version always had that. So let's just kill some of the spiders that spawn when you typically use here. So what we want to do is actually drop down and get the third uh, secret to complete the full set. Tomb Raider 2 will always be like the best and perfect Tomb Raider 2, but could you imagine if they implemented the crawl in Tomb Raider 2? I think that's like really the only move that was missing from Lara's kind of move set that they didn't bring until Tomb Raider 3. I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made it much of a difference, but they probably could have gotten a bit more variety in terms of platforming if they had the crawl done up in version 2. But obviously climbing walls and scaling ladders was a much more important uh, feature for them to add in the second game. And you just have to kind of carefully do it like that. And that's how you get down. Yeah, this isn't a, a no save run for sure. I we're, we're saving, we're just chilling. Because I've never pl I was never... Ah. Oh, so that is something about when you use the long draw distance. Is that you can kind of see enemies spawn from afar. Come on, get them, Lara! Get them! Rawr. Did I just jump right into it? Maybe we'll do a pistols only run. Oh, that's like the camera for when you're going down the zipline, that's funny. Let's go ahead and grab the gold dragon, and this will give us the grenade launcher. Uh -huh. Look at all those secrets. And look, there's another one waiting for us! I always used to love the way of Ward. But I love this as their way of saying like, how do we up the ante from the Lost Valley of Tomb Raider 1 where we had one T-Rex? We're gonna put in two for the hardcore players. And uh, that just, that, that's, and this is the first level of Tomb Raider 2, you know? Like if some poor unfortunate soul one went exploring and they're like, oh, let's have a pop down here and see what's down there. They'd be in for a rude awakening. So let's light a flare mostly for you guys because my no streaming is sometimes darker than, um, how it looks in person as we do a long uh, climb up the wall to get back to where we need to be. They even did the textures right so that it always matched where Lara's feet and hands would be. Even her sound effects are fire. I mean I just love when she picks things up and she goes uh-huh. I mean Tomb Raider 2 just knew what she was doing. Oh I didn't realize there'd be another spider that spawned. Yeah I don't remember everything. And then I love the zipline epic movie moments. I mean, thank God they had ziplines back in the day. <laughs> Range in China. Block device. And then we spawn to do some more tigers. Now, I don't want to trigger the cutscene straight away. I always love going over and having a peek. This is like a laptop that belongs to one of the Fiamma Nera guards. Um, your first clue that you're going to be encountering something suspicious. So without further ado, let's uh, move on to the next level. And Judah Gibbons, you did a great job, hon. Pardon me. If that was just your way of trying the doors for me. Yeah, I'm not gonna do line readings, don't worry, it's not gonna be a cringy playthrough. But I might lip sync it. So after you. 
Somehow, like I do know the lines off by heart. Like go so bad. I understand that somehow is in my favor. So indulge me about the dagger. I'd be indebted with your life. These doors are waiting for the right one, the right time to arrive, and then the dagger's blade will honor the hearts of those who believe. So unless you pledge your loyalty as well. And which one is that? To the sins and fortunes of Marco Bartoli. Not just yet, then. I hope you guys enjoyed that amateur performance of cutscene one of Tomb Raider 2. <laughs> Aha, Gianni Bartelli, Via Caravelli, Venice. Like a really fun Easter egg is in the map version they met at an Apple laptop. So yeah, we got all the secrets, but apparently that was only 1.24 kilometers. I don't think their measurements are just are quite there. I always used to love that loading screen growing up, the one of her in Venice. Shit, doggo. I think Venice is such an iconic level. The entire set of levels. Um, even, you know, the opera house, which is when things get really tough and confusing. I mean, only in Tomb Raider 2 could a backstage room for the actors be an absolute death trap with the AC vents. <laughs> and if you haven't played Tomb Raider 2, you'll, you'll see that soon when we get to that level. But it's an absolute uh -huh. death trap. Those poor actors back in the day. So all we got to do is climb up here. And again, like growing up, like it was just an absolute pleasure to look out these windows. And again, that's drawing a lot of polygons, like Tomb Raider 2. She is a technical marvel. I mean, Tomb Raider 4 is the technical marvel, but I mean, for Tomb Raider 2 is also great. They all got around, they all, all, they were all good. You know, they got better and better. They really knew how to make the most of the engine. They, they didn't do the colors of that so well. Uh -huh. now, this is for the boat, I believe. Oh no, I need to- oh, I, I forgot to push the switch in the boathouse. That's- I did it in the wrong order. That's okie dokie. Sound effects are fire. I also love how generous they are with the weapons. Like in level two, you already get the automatic pistols. Those are fun. Get those are fun guns. I mean, obviously my favorite are the Uzis, but I think you know, in other Tomb Raider games, they really make you go on for ages and ages before you can get your hands on some fun weapons to spice up your gameplay. Whereas you're already starting out with the shotgun. You get the magnums in already in the second level, and you're gonna you know that's not that's not a secret baddie. I mean, you're gonna trigger that baddie no matter what and all those players are getting access to them instantly. Like, it's a very gratifying and rewarding kind of experience, I think. And again, Ponzi just, you know, hopping around on the rooftops of Venice. This is, it's just fun. It's a fun premise, fun story, fun concept, fun levels. That's why Tomb Raider 2 excels you know, in every vertical. <laughs> I love bombing down the, uh, the little roots of Venice. Uh, I'm gonna just pick up a secret, I know there's one here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Boom. Sorry, Lara. Just park the boat in here temporarily. 
doesn't like from the demo mode that plays the new uh, theme of the game idling for some time. And like the even they're generous with the magnum bullets or the one of them's called the magnum. The automatic pistol bullets. Uh -huh. Truly inspiring. Okay, so there's actually no pickups here. No problemo. This is where my memory would be a little bit... Yeah, there's some Uzi clips here. Uh. Onto the boat, Miss Croft. Oh, iconic. And the music's gonna play. But I love breaking the canoes, I love it all. And I love jumping out just in time before those explode. You know what? Let's use the magnums, or the automatic pistols. I think in the past couple of months I've been playing so many kind of bad quality PS1 games, like before this I've just done Pax Corpus, so it's actually been kind of nice to play a good PlayStation game, or I suppose in this case it's the PC version. Oh no, stop the music! Sorry folks, I didn't realise that happened. Now we just waste those with just pistols. I'm to where that was. It's gonna be one of these doors. Either this one, or it's the... It's this one. one second, I miss Croft. why they just textured it entirely in ladders. It's like, you could have done something better there. You know what I mean? Ooh. Okay, so for fun, should we use the shotgun? I think he was about to whack us from the... <laughs> wow, well, poor doggy. I wanted to end it quick. Uh -huh. The doggo deserved a quick death. And just the little details, like there's an aerial on the roof, like of course there is. Now does he have a gun? He has a gun. Okay, let me just be strategic about this, because I'm going to get shot at as soon as I drop down. I might waste him with one bullet. Yeah, okay. Now I just switch to my pistols. Here we go. That took care of him, and he did not drop anything. You actually don't have to go through all this effort. If you drive the motor or the speedboat quick enough, you can just basically go to the exit if you uh, can platform it quick enough. Oh, I'm at the wrong entrance, am I? I don't think it's, I think it's for the one over there. One second, so I got ahead of myself. You know, it's funny, in Tomb Raider 3 they brought in like this big like artificial intelligence scientist, like he was literally like like a professor at some university and they were like, we're gonna pay you a ton of money to make the enemies in Tomb Raider 3 clever and he stayed on for Tomb Raider 4 as well. And they're pretty smart in Tomb Raider 4, but what I love about the baddies in Tomb Raider 2 is just how aggressive they are. They shoot to kill and they take 
health off of you. I mean, they are aggressive mofos in Tomb Raider 2. In Tomb Raider 4, they're kind of really reluctant to shoot you. It's like, uh, don't be shy, you can shoot me. Whereas in Tomb Raider 2, like, you have mercy. I just love swinging from the rooftops and the, the canopies. Right, this is a tricky situation. Now, Lara, can you please aim on the one with the gun? Because I can platform around the other fucker. Of course it, of course I went for dog first. <laughs> that is such a Tomb Raider thing to do. <laughs> this is lemon trees, because it's Venice. It's Venetian. Nothing more Venetian than a good lemon tree. Where does this overlook actually? Oh, that's like the little thing you can speedboat down. <laughs> These will come in clutch. Uh -huh. Sometimes I do like a pistols only run, but I. I'm kind of just wanting to enjoy this playthrough because I've played this so many times. If you guys are in, obviously looking for a full walkthrough about all the secrets, go watch someone else. This is kind of just more of a personal chillax, like I, cause I really do enjoy Tomb Raider 2 and I just really wanted to play it for fun. Look at like, look, just appreciate the detail for 1997. Those, look at those sprites. But actually the gold triangle or the gold dragon is down here. Oh, you got a ton of magnum ammo. <laughs> okay. Was it worth it? <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do an all-secrets run and then by the end of it this will probably turn into an all-secrets run. I don't think so. I think this was just a case I was like, hmm, we should probably go get that. So the whole point of these games is that they basically make it a shortcut that for the average player, those doors there are going to open for a limited amount of time and the whole idea is with a shortcut, you can basically get there quicker. But I'm going to basically show you that you don't actually have to do that. Um, you can actually avoid having to do all that gameplay if you can just run the speedboat fast enough. Which of course, as a Tomb Raider 2 expert, I can. So even though we've opened that up, I'm not going to bother taking the shortcut. I can show you how to go the, uh, the long way. Ugh, if I survive. Thankfully, they're always dropping magnum ammo. So, now I'm actually not sure how the triggering works. You might not actually need to, need to do this, but this is how I've always played it, I suppose, is I've always had the boat lined up and ready. But I believe someone told me it actually doesn't trigger until you leave the room. But um, I'm not gonna, I'm honestly not bothered to take the chance of having to do a reload. So we're going to uh, have the boat lined up and ready because this is how I've always done it growing up. So if you go quick enough, folks, you don't have to use just you don't have to use that gate. You can skip a ton of gameplay. So yeah, there is the clock ticking, and you get this cool moment, movie moment. I love that. But actually, you don't have to go through that shortcut. If you just speed the boat quick enough, you can get around. This is like, if I don't make this, I'm gonna be so disappointed in myself. This is like, you know, like doing something silly on your driving test. Like, you actually don't have to open those shortcuts. You just drive that speedboat quick enough. Beautiful. Mwah! All secrets. Is she holding something in her hand on the loading screen? I never knew that after all those years. I suppose for the most part, that's kind of where you ditch the boat. Hmm. Never really thought about that. This hunky Italian beefcake coming right at us. The Fiamma Nera always knew to hire the muscles. The Armani and Versace model rejects. <laughs> 
they go for a life of crime. Oh, I just enjoyed always looking at the windows. And look at the way the maps are connected. We're gonna come back to this area later on. But like the level designers knew just put a window there. Like, oh, I just love the attention to detail. It's like a foreshadowing of the next area. I love how aggressive the enemies are. Like they really want, like want your head on a stick, you know what I mean? Oops, forgot about you. I'm gonna deal with you later. <laughs> I'll deal with him in a minute. I have more people inside to kill. I love that like when core design taught of like Italian mafia, they're like man bun, ponytail, man with a ponytail. <laughs> I like the dogs in their little garden, just mining their own beeswax. I wouldn't have had to kill them, but I really wanted this pickup. Uh -huh. Just like Lara Croft's motto for most things. I really wanted to steal this artifact, so I have to kill a bunch of you to do that. Oh, he put they put the reflections on the PC version. That's lovely. And I love that you can even see into this area, that's the library, which we'll get to later on. This is a really great patch if you're a PC player, so whether you got this on Steam or GOG, I'm playing on Steam, I, I bought it for 99 cents on Steam, there was a Steam sale, and I was like, I'll just do Tomb Raider 2 that way. I was going to do the PlayStation version, but I thought if I can get a higher quality output, um, I would do it uh, this way. And Judith Gibbons, her sound effects, like whatever she did in that recording studio, good on you. I'm pretty sure they've uh, raised it probably up an octave or two for just to get different types of tone. But like Judith Gibbons, her voice acting is so good. And I believe they brought her back for Tomb Raider Reloaded for whenever that comes out. They've been working on that game for a long, long time. Like, frankly, longer than a mainline Tomb Raider game. <laughs> I like, didn't Rise take like two years, then they've been working on Reloaded for longer than that, and that's just the mobile game. That's gonna be inevitably free to play with lots of in-app purchases, I'm sure. I hope maybe they can do something with Apple Arcade. I'd be happy to get it on Apple Arcade if I can just get the full game, all unlockables, that type of thing. Probably would have been the smarter business decision for the game developers. Because I mean, if you're gonna spend a ton of money on in-app purchases, and so if someone has that purchasing power, they probably most likely own an iPhone. So why not just offer it on Apple Arcade for like, you can just get it, no ifs or buts. Not have to deal with silly little in-app purchases. Right, sorry, I forgot what I, was, I forgot what the plan was. Yes, doggy, 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 doggy. And unlike Pax Corpus, these actually look like little dogs, or big dogs. At least I look like dogs. <laughs> Let's pull this and get a secret. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I know the strat. So on we go. I think I've always preferred jumping through the glass than like shooting through it. Drop a comment down below and let me know if you preferred either shooting or jumping through the glass windows. Uh -huh. A little detail, but um, I think every Tomb Raider fan has their preference when it comes to this kind of thing. Because it's an action moment, you know? Like it's Lara Croft in action. leave me any pickups no and they all die in the fetal position i'm pretty sure lara has those um wall lights in her own home it's like you know when i was passing by croft manor i think he stole some of those from italy <laughs> i 
and try not to get sliced by these. Right. I love the music in this bit. I for, I, oh my god, I keep forgetting how good the music is. Everything's bomb in this. Um, we don't need to climb into the fireplace now, I don't think. Let me just do this under there platforming. There it is. Such a good track. It's so clever too. How about you? <laughs> that, actually, that, that actually got me by surprise. I mean, now I remember, but like, not a minute ago. I guess if like you weren't good at these types of controls, that would have terrified you about falling off. I love the way this changes the position of the chandeliers. Sorry, for the first time in a long time, I was like, is she gonna, I was like, the grid system caught me by surprise. Uh -huh. Yes. Fine, this is just take me back to that other stupid room. Oh no, this is where I need to be, the library. Perfect. So it opens up beautifully for us. Now before we enter the library, um, I just have to uh, get a secret. <laughs> so we're just going to come in here and this is like this little kind of, I guess, what you call her a sewer? She's something all right. <laughs> I guess she's just a maze. <laughs> I mean, let's not kid ourselves. Let's get some grenade launcher ammo. And like, it's clever enough that she doesn't go, aha, uh -huh, underwater. They knew to disable that for the underwater pickups. I think it's because it's a separate animation from my, my time doing Tomb Raider level editor. You can assign, assign different sounds to different animations. So I think it's probably just something that arbitrary. Enter the library. Hint, hint, because there's books on the ground. That's how you know you're going into a library. <laughs> Like it was such a it was such a clever novelty. Like, oh guys, they just got the vibe, you know. I, I did see the Crystal Dynamics documentary about you know thirty years of crystal. It was a really great documentary. <laughs> like, as much as I love core design, damn it, you should. When Crystal Dynamics offered you their game engine for Angel of Darkness, why did you idiots not take it? I couldn't believe it when they came out with that detail. I was like, oh, are you serious? Like, because core design were clearly struggling to make their own game engine for Angel of Darkness. And Crystal Dynamics had this amazing streaming engine from Soul Reaver. Like, you fools. Like, I'm always willing to call it how it is. You know, like, imagine how good Angel of Darkness could have. You guys could have kept the game in your 
you know, your, your studio could have been still open if you guys didn't have, you know, like ego and, you know, like wanting just to have your own proprietary game engine. You should have used theirs. Particularly, like, like when you think about it, like that's the way the industry is now. Everybody's building shit in Unreal Five. You know what I mean? Any good pickups for me, boys? Uh -huh. Got some shotgun shells. Got some Uzi clips. Uh -huh. Anything else? This is from the loading screen, right? This is like supposed to be the room she was in. I'm thinking, at least that's how I always felt growing up. Like they kind of did a render, a 3D render on 3DS Max of that area. Right, 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 right. Uh, let's climb up here. I'll just take a health pack so you guys don't have to look at that bloody thing blinking all day. Because I know that can be quite annoying. Jump. You can climb for those who are maybe nervous of platforming. But, I mean, I'd be a bit embarrassing if I can't do a simple hop and a jump. Now look at the, look, look at the horizon. Beautiful. Time of day changing, you know, Venice, the level before, pure daytime, we're coming into the afternoon, evening, because when you go to Oprah House, it's going to be nighttime. Oh, attention to detail. Love it. Yeah, because besides the London levels, in Tomb Raider 3, everything takes place during the day. I guess besides City of the Dead, everything else takes place during the day in Tomb Raider 4 as well. Yeah, City of the Dead is like the new nighttime section. I'm just looking in the water. Is there like, not, not, I know there's no secrets uh, in the water here, but I mean, is there just any pickups I should know about? No, I don't think so. Oh, scratching my nose. I was about being shot at. But I love like the detail of the fireplace there and it being on the roof. Like, you know, just, again, it's just attention to detail. I mean, will you guys be able to see it? I mean, you can see the little chimney there. It's funny, I got lost first. Oh! Got surprised yet again! Besties, I'm supposed to be over there, aren't I? Walk to the edge, the white land, till I stop. There you go. Okie dokie. See, I love the chimney detail. Love what you did with the place. Love everything about it. Oh, did I already do that just for a pair of Uzis? <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, I did. They are my favourite weapon after all. to lose these Uzis like in another level. As soon as I go to the offshore rig, they're gonna be taken off me. Guess we might as well just enjoy them now. You know, why not? Let's, let's YOLO it. Perfecto. Thanking you. So what we don't want to do is to blow this up just yet. We do need to get in there first to get our, to get our secret. That's clever, because if you blow it up, you obviously lose the secrets so it's like you know it's it's, a, it's one way you can actually screw it up if you save after for example you'd have to restart the whole level oh well you have plenty of bullets a bit overkill to use uzis on them but we're going for it oh there ain't no one here Look at all the shotgun shells. Perfect. Ah, beautiful horizon. Beautiful vistas. Beautiful scenery. She's a star. 
Radio, now that we've gotten everything, we can go ahead and blow it up. Yes, 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 don't freak out. Let's, let's unload some boozies on them. I might need to take a health kit. <laughs> she ain't looking so good. I don't think he drops anything. You can shimmy. I've done it before, but I actually don't think he drops anything, so it's not worth it. And if he does drop something, it really wasn't that memorable. Did I leave something down there? No, that was glass. Now, I've never been honest, been bothered to look down there. There's obviously nothing in the water. I've always just kind of scaled it and went about, went about my day. anything <laughs> and then basically this is it this is you kind of just slide your way down and you're in opera house that's night time all of a sudden so uh oh is that barbed wire mm, that's how you know you're going somewhere dangerous barbed wire right 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 and this closes out bartoli's hideout all secrets you love to see it trina 3.3 kilometers, which I feel like Lara is more than 3.3 kilometers. I don't think this I don't think the measurement is quite there. And 37 kills. Let's move on to the next level. And this is, folks, the infamous Oprah House. And I think this is where I'm gonna leave it off for part one. Um with such an iconic level. Let's do a save. Yeah, I hope you guys join me. Let's do part two. I think part two will do Opera House. Let me tell you something, Opera House is Chalong level, that could be an entire part in it of itself. But we'll do Opera House and then we'll do, you know, the offshore rig and then whatever that second level's called, digging well or I guess I think it's like I think it's called the diving section or something. Um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed watching, do drop a comment down below and let me know what you love about Tomb Raider 2 and tell me what is your favourite Tomb Raider game in the franchise or give me your top three because obviously mine is Tomb Raider 2, classic, Rise of the Tomb Raider, reboot, and then Tomb Raider Anniversary, the Legend Legend Anniversary Underworld Trilogy, that's my top three. Uh, but like Tomb Raider 2 would still be one, like really you know, top one. Uh, but do let me know what your uh, top Tomb Raider is and then obviously your top three. Uh, do let me know in the comments down below if you liked it and you want to see part two do subscribe and hit the like button and i will see you all in the next video it might not be might not be part two straight away i might do another video but we will do be doing part two of two murder two don't worry uh but stay safe stay well and i'll see you all very soon bye